morning quilt roadies. I'm home. I've almost gotten unpacked. Um, as you'll notice, I have a big tomato on my head. So let me just tell you all about it. It, um, as you know, if you're new to the channel, I just came back from a quilt retreat. I, um, went over the mountain as we in Oregon, if you're not familiar, in Oregon we're all about going over a mountain or across the river. Um, and so I went over the mountain. I can't tell you how much my soul has been filled. Um, so we are the Fabric Stalkers, named the Fabric Stalkers way, way, way back in the day. And we meet, now that kind of we're kind of all spread out, although a majority are still on the other side of the mountain, um, we meet up in the Sun River area. This is um, a house that we've had before, and it is absolutely lovely right on the river. And we had a fantastic retreat. It was a little bit bittersweet because we were missing a few people who, um, for medical or planning reasons, couldn't be there. So they were very much missed. And, um, and we're all getting older. Oh my God, one year, one year. And you're like, oh my gosh, we're all getting older. But we had a fabulous time. Absolutely fabulous time. And um, I also was able to meet up with my uh, berries group, which is the stitching uh, quilting group in um, Sisters, Oregon. So I'm going to tell you all about it. It it was a um, it was a soul filling trip. Uh, so I went over the mountain. It was a beautiful drive over the mountain, and um, checked in at our house that we rented and immediately had all those flood of memories that come back to you when you're reliving an event from the previous year. And this time my roommate and I um, had the upstairs apartment there. The house has several bedrooms, but it also has an apartment above the garage and since the sisters weren't there this year um, uh, Robin and I got the bedroom <laughs> because we're the early risers and it's a little more challenging for us because we're up at like 4 35 in the morning and trying to make coffee and be quiet and not wake everybody up so having the space above the garage was perfect because we could get up we could talk in a normal tone of voice we have coffee um, yeah it was the perfect spot for us um, the weather was perfect. I mean perfect. Perfect spring weather in the high desert. So it gets chilly sometimes, but the skies were clear. The river, there was even people paddle boarding and people walking their dogs. And you'll see some pictures of the area um, that I'll have G kind of put in. And you're going to want to stay till the end because I on the way home, not wanting to skip to the end, but you're going to want to stay uh, on and watch the whole show because there's some fun stuff at the end. So when I arrived, we set up, we, uh, if you, if you have been with me through this quilting journey, uh, the last episode, I wasn't going to take a sewing machine this time, which has its ups and downs, but this time it was the perfect choice. 80% of what I create is some type of handwork. And so um, I decided that I was going to make this particular retreat a laid back handwork retreat. And uh, it was the perfect choice for me. I took both uh, my quilting stuff like uh, binding uh, needed to be tacked down, embroidery, wool stitching, 
and cross stitch and uh, it was perfect because I could listen and to the conversations going around. Now here's the thing, if you do not have um, a group that you quilt with, there are um, there are a variety of ways how to hook up with people, either through uh, quilt shops or churches. Um, I know this particular group that I am in in the Bend area, we all work together. And so it has created an unusual group of people in terms of history. Um, we were all young mothers. I mean, when I first started working at that particular hospital, my youngest was um, not even a year old. So, and now he's a father of two. Uh, so you're talking about a wide breadth of history and we have watched all of the joys, the love, the heartaches, the fear of parenting together, which creates kind of an unusual bond and group. Um, I have uh, not seen anything like it. Uh, and so when I, when we get together, just to give you an idea, we can talk history, uh, our working, um, the fears, the laughter, the everything, all the human emotions are there and it binds us even tighter. And so it is a real gift. It's a real gift. But by George, we are all getting older. <laughs> all getting older and um, you know catching up on what each of our uh, family units and kids are doing and now grandkids you know we've got uh, one kid is in medical school you know another uh, a kid has you know all, a lot of other kids have children they're already in their professional lives uh, it's it's truly um, it's truly an unusual yet precious, just a precious group. Um, and so I love, I, I just, I don't want to miss that opportunity. For as many times as we can keep putting one foot in the other, I will be going to that retreat. Um, so we get in there, we unpack all our food, we each take a turn at dinner, and everybody does their um, uh, lunch and breakfast on their own. Um, and I, so Robin and I had one night of dinner, and I'm here to tell you, it was horrifying. Yes, it was absolutely horrifying. And, and they're all telling me, no, it's not, but it was horrifying. So I was going to make vegetable soup. And um, so I had all the fresh vegetables, including what I thought were wonderful um, multicolored carrots for the soup. But when I was cutting up the carrots, I noticed that my hands were dyed purple from the carrot, the purple carrot. I mean, literally dyed. And I was like, oh my gosh, I can't touch any fabric or cross stitch. So I actually had to scrub my hands with soap and a scrub brush to get the purple off. And then I cooked the soup and when I opened the pot, everything was purple. <laughs> everything was purple and I squealed because I was like, holy moly, I am not eating that. I am not eating that. and. Um, so, you know, they were all trying to make me feel good. Oh, it, it'll taste fine. That's what beets do. And I'm like, I've never had anything do this. I've made this soup m millions of times, and it did not. The purple carrot didn't dye everything purple. I mean, the soup was purple. Uh, and Robin tasted the carrot and said it was delicious. And um, only uh, Val and I were not eating that soup. I'm like... I'm not eating that soup. Are you going to eat that soup? No, I'm not eating that soup. And But everyone else ate the soup, and they said it was delicious. Not me. It was purple. I don't, 
I've never had that happen before. Okay, so this is a channel about quilting, but it is also about the drama that was going on, which includes the purple soup. And I'm going to be all over the board because, yeah, welcome to Quilt Roadies. So, um, that was the drama of my evening of cooking. Yeah, it was very interesting. And there were snacks all over the counter. I mean, just snacks all over the counter. Yeah. And every so often you get up from what you were doing and one or two of you go out for a walk along the river. It was just beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And um, kind of those, it was a moment of taking a break from life. Yeah. But then the next day, the second day, I got in the car and I went to Sisters because I quilted Sisters. We know the Sisters Outdoor Quilt Show is coming. I had to drop my postcard off and uh, I had to go over to the stitching post. And then I got to meet up with my quilt group that was in Sisters. And let me tell you, those girls are talented. And um, I just have to show you one of Jeannie, um, uh, Jean, who um, brought this bag. <laughs> uh, she made a bag, uh, and we all fell in love with it. But I said, I want to buy that bag, and she wouldn't let me buy it. She gave it to me. Yeah, she is an amazing bag maker. So if you are interested in having a bag made by her, um, you can, uh, in the comments, send me your contact information and I will pass it on to her. Um, she doesn't have a site or anything for that, but let me just show you this bag. I have no idea the name of the bag. I... Um, I don't make bags, but look at this thing. Isn't that just awesome? Look at the zipper. The zipper is iridescent. I've never seen a zipper like that. So when you um, open it, it folds out like this. It has a zippered pouch here, and then these clear and mesh pouches along this upper part there. It was, I mean, it is absolutely gorgeous. And so inside, I put my project. I actually, uh, this was the project that, one of the projects I took that was the farmhouse quilts, that where I used the transferees for the embroidery. Yeah, well, on this particular project, I took it to Sisters to stitch because we stitched a, a good part of the morning into the afternoon. Um, and I was talking so much that this is all I got stitched. One leaf. One leaf. <laughs> but this project is going to live in this bag. I just love it. So since I was over in Sisters, um, I couldn't do everything I wanted to do. I literally had, uh, you know, another person that I wanted to visit, and I couldn't fit it in before I had to get back. And they're doing road work everywhere in Central Oregon, so it was kind of a cluster to get to and from. But I stopped at Angeline's and got my bagel. Um, and then went out to the quilt group and had a wonderful time out there. Then I came back to Sun River and stitched the evening away. And then stitched the subsequent days. What you have to know, you want to know about the tomato, don't you? So here's the thing. In our stitch group, the Fabric Stalkers, we have a quilt angel. I don't know if she's quite an angel, but in quilting she is. And 
she is a, has an amazing brain and can figure out things um, and is an incredibly um, fast piecer. And so uh, last time we got together, she asked all of us to um, give her kits or projects that we had that we wanted her to put together. Yeah, you heard me right. You heard me right. She said, no, her words are, I don't have a life. I don't believe it. Um, but she wants to peace a lot. And so she asks everybody in the group to bring her, you know, some projects that we've had lounging around and have not finished. And this particular Laura Heine um, pattern, which is, uh, let me find it, which is this one here. As you know, she is a amazing artistic um, creative pattern making uh, pattern. And I put together one of her quilts for my older son, which was the octopus. If you've been here a long time, you'll remember that from a long time ago. But I had this pincushion because I loved it. And um, then after I did the octopus, I was like, oh, I am kind of done with that. I need a break. And in a purging moment, I gave this whole kit, and I had bought the kit, to another person in our quilt group. And that happens a lot. Stuff, stuff moves around our quilt group. And then she had it at her house for a while and said, I'm not going to do this. And so she passed it on to the quilt angel in our group. And she got it done. I'm here to tell you, all I have to do is quilt that. Isn't it gorgeous? Absolutely gorgeous. And I was trying to figure out where I, I'm going to hang it. You know, it's a pretty um, statement piece. But I kind of like it right on my design wall. So I think when I'm not using my design wall, I'm going to have it hang right there. Now I'm just going to be jumping around a little bit. So many, uh, there were some people that asked where I, I had this hanging last time. And you know, this is from 2016. So I honestly can't remember. Um, I'm, I'm thinking this is Buttermilk Basin, but I'm not sure. Uh, so I would contact them and see if that's if that is um, by Stacy. It's either I'm thinking it looks to me like buttermilk basin or primitive gatherings. They were both my favorite thing. I did get done my April bunny on my Kathy Schmitz. So I'm on target with that. So next month is the little bee teacup. I'm looking forward to that one. So it was a lot of little things that I got done. A lot of little things. Yeah. And then I can't show you all the quilts that I was gifted back, but um, I'm going to show you a couple of them. And I'll show you in the future as I get things done. But... This was when the fabric stalkers in one of our retreats, uh, usually, I should say, one of the activities that we do when we're on quilt retreat is to make the two and a half hour drive from the Sun River area down to Merrill, Oregon, which is right on the border of California. Because in Merrill, Oregon is an amazing quilt shop. It is a destination quilt shop. I mean, you have got to, if you're ever 
traveling up from California to Oregon or Washington, you have got to stop in Merrill, Oregon, because the Tater Patch is an extraordinary shop. It has something for everyone. I, I'm telling you, it has Sue Spargo threads. It has Edita Sitar. It, I mean, any fabric line. And, and the samples, and it's just fabulous. And um, down below, downstairs, is the sale room. Yeah. And they have the largest collection of Yazzie bags in a shop that I have ever seen. Yeah. You need a Yazzie bag, and you don't want to mail order it. You want to make a trip to Tater Patch. Well, a few years ago, when we were there, the Fabric Stalkers makes a field trip. Yeah, we make a field trip. I saw this adorable quilt that came with a storybook, and it was this one here. And this is by Edita Sitar, and I just thought it was the sweetest thing. And so I had the whole kit and everything, and my quilt angel... Look at that rainbow, and look at that. So now, see, I have a lot of quilting to do. I just think it's adorable, so I'm going to be quilting this one. A Story to Read, A Quilt to Make, illustrated by Sue Cornelson. Cornelson, yeah. It's kind of funny because last week before I left for a quilt retreat, I was looking for this particular project and I could not find it anywhere in my sewing room. I didn't know what I did with it. It was a fishbowl pattern that was uh, designed by Gail who owns Back Porch in Pacific Grove and I knew that I wouldn't have gotten rid of it because I just thought it was so clever. Well it turned out I gave it to the quilt angel in our group. I mean it and so she brought it back to me and I am so excited I'm going to be quilting this because I'm hanging it in my ocean room. Uh, for those who are not, uh, haven't been here very long, I have um, the kids' bedroom, my grandkids' uh, bedroom when they visit or stay overnight or guests come and stay overnight is my ocean room. And it is an, to honor my parents. We grew up on sailing on the ocean. And so... Um, I'm going to quilt this quilt and put it up over the bed. Look at that. It's fish bowls. And I'm telling you, it is, I mean, look at that sea otter. This is the coolest pattern and it is really reasonable if you um, call up the back porch and ask them and it, it is just an awesome pattern. I just want to show you. I want to show you all the bowls. I'm very excited about this one. This is the next one that I'm going to be quilting. I, um also got uh, from Fat Quarter Shop the Jolly Bar Heart Quilt um, and I bought fabric. Okay, I'm getting a little ahead of myself, okay? So let me back up a little bit and show you what else I stitched. I mean literally that king size quilt that I bound I did one side every day to get it done. And then I started stitching on the next block 
and this is from Primitive Gatherings. And so I I just got some stitching the center. I I stitched buttonhole stitched all the leaves down and I started doing the feather stitch and I thought, you know, I need to tack down that center so I don't ever lose it. So I did the fancy stitching on the center to hold that whole layer together. Um, and so that one, I'm going to keep marching across on that one. What else? I mean, it was, it was truly, um, you know, sometimes you just need a break from your life. This was an awesome break. And when I was driving over the mountain, I was listening to a book that has it kind of has made me think about, I say this every book, don't I? Don't I? Isn't that funny? I say this every book. This book is one you must read. But it is called Yellow Face. And it kind of, uh, I mean, it makes you think about social media and the pain and... distortions of social media that people can make or break someone on social media just seems unfathomable to me but it is a, a mystery at the beginning it is high drama it is trying to figure out what's going on it does a whole background of what the publishing world is like because the characters in the book are um, authors or writers and that whole industry and how our self-esteem the it's it is fiction but how are so many people who are on social media and like on this platform here that their self-esteem is um dependent on how many likes or i mean the book i it was really good. So, Yellow Face is the book um, if you want to um, pick up something a little different. Uh, and now I have moved on to a new book, um, and it is um, called The House in the Cruelian Sea by T.J. Clune. Yeah, so far so good. So far so good. Uh, I think the only other thing that I could share with you this time, and you want to be sure to stay the very end, because what I did on my way home was I always, uh, you know, when you have like, you, when you're my age and you have like a three plus hour trip, you have to figure out your bathroom breaks, especially going over the mountain, because there isn't a, a significant amount of bathrooms and, or ones that you would, actually want to use. You know what I mean? So I decided um, one of the gals in the group said there was a new quilt shop in Madras, Oregon. And you don't hear that too often anymore. It's all about a quilt shop closing, not a quilt shop opening. So I knew that I was going to be stopping at that quilt shop and that I'd be sharing it with you. And so you want to stay to the end because I did do a little walk around in that shop, which was adorably sweet. It's not huge, but because it's not huge, the fabrics they had were ones that I hadn't seen before, which doesn't happen too often. But sometimes when you get in a big fabric store, you are overwhelmed by all of the colors and all of the beauty, and you don't see any particular fabric. And so I um, stopped there, and that, it so delights, um, so delightful quilt shop in Madras. And I'll put the link down below. And they also have long arm quilting service 
by Minda there. So it was what was really great was when I stopped there, there was a gal who was um, clipping her binding to start sewing it down, and it was her first quilt. I, you know, warms my heart. Quilting is alive and well. And in Central Oregon, they are having, on May 17th and 18th, they are having the Central Oregon Shop Hop. And the shops that are in that Shop Hop are the Quilt Shack in Prineville, Oregon, So Delightful in Madras, Oregon, Anvil Sewing in Bend, Oregon, Cynthia's of Bend in Bend, Oregon, The Quilt Basket in Bend, Oregon. It is an event. So you're going to want to, oh, and the grand prize, ooh, baby, the grand prize is a Brother PS500 Pace Setter Sewing Machine. That's May 17th and 18th. Yeah. So when I was at that shop, I knew that I was going to, with all the quilt tops that came back to me, I was going to need some backing. And... I saw this bolt of 108 inch wide backing. Oh my gosh, look at this. I think this is the coolest backing ever. It's printed like patchwork blue jeans. I mean, even the, even the pocket, the pocket of the blue jeans. So I bought some yardage because I have a couple quilts that I want to do this with. And um, I just think this is, oh, look at this, look at this. It looks so dimensional, doesn't it? But it is cotton fabric, and they had a big bolt of it. Um, so if you're interested, and, and know that uh, So Delightful Quilt Shop does have a website, and they do mail order, so you can get some of this packing fabric, which would be awesome uh, for any um, college, teenage, heck, even even me, <laughs> backing for fabric. Okay, so I have some exciting things coming down the pike uh, from Fat Quarter Shop, so I'll be sharing with that uh, with you in the future. But stay tuned right now for a little video of the shop and some pictures of the quilt retreat. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and I hope all is going well. We are back into the rain here um, but yesterday G and I spread bark. We planted some more plants. Uh, we took advantage of the sun out because we're in for rain for a few more days. <laughs> okay you know you 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 guys all know how much I love you and thank you for being here and being kind. I am happy to say that a quilt shop has opened up in Madras, Oregon. It's just so heartwarming to know that shops are opening up these days. So let's go inside and take a look at this sweet shop. They are going to have extended hours during the Sisters Quilt Show. So come on in. It is located on D Street in Madras. And the Central Oregon Shop Hop is happening on <laughs> May 17th and 18th.